for today's agenda, we'll just briefly go over what is the Grade Center and how items get into the Grade Center. And then we're going to move on to how to use the inline grading feature that's in Blackboard, as well as how to provide video feedback to your uh, students. So what is the Grade Center? Basically within Blackboard, it's an electronic grade book. It keeps track of all of your grades and assignments in one place. This is an actual Grade Center screenshot that I have not so beautifully uh, erased the names of the students so that we aren't showing the personally identifiable information. And when students submit their assignments through the Grade Center or do any tests through the Grade Center, it tracks the date and the time that they submitted the, the assignment as well as letting you know in the Grade Center that they've submitted it. You can also use it to calculate your final grades, even if you have weighted grades. We can help you set that up as well. And it provides students with the access to just their grades. Each student only sees their own grades. Sometimes they don't, they don't see what you see here as an instructor. Their view is different, and their view is just of their grades. So you don't have to worry about them seeing information that isn't appropriate. How do items get into the Grade Center? Well, there's a couple of ways. Uh, you can use, within Blackboard, you can use the Assignment Manager. So when you're in Blackboard, and we'll go to Blackboard shortly, and I'll show you how to do this. But you can go into Blackboard and choose uh, what, Tools. Oh, now all of a sudden I forgot what it is. You can select to have the assignments in there, or you can select to have the, a discussion board, a blog, or a wiki. When you put those in there, you can choose to have it be a graded assignment. And once you choose that and how many points it should be, then it shows up in your grade center. You can also add in a test or a quiz that's created by Blackboard that you use Blackboard to create. And then that add, is added to your grade center as well. And you can also manually add in a column. So something maybe not a test but, or not something that students would submit, like class participation. So you put in a column for class participation, and then you manually type in what their grade is for that. So one feature that we're going to look at more in depth here now is something called inline grading. And what inline grading is, is when students submit a document through the assignment manager, or even, yes, through the assignment manager, if it's a Word, a PowerPoint, an Excel, or a PDF file, then you can write notes on it. And Blackboard actually has a full page on their website that gives a very detailed description of all of this. I'm going to send each of you this PowerPoint presentation. And when I do, you'll be able to click on this link, and you'll get to the Blackboard page if you want very specific details about it. But let's just take, I'm going to now switch over so that you can see my screen. What we have here is a course that has some pretend students in it so we don't have to worry about any of that. And I've loaded some assignments in here as well as had the students, uh, the demonstration students submit some assignments that we can take a look at. So I just want to show you before we look at the inline grading feature, this is what students see. They don't have access to this gray section. So the part that they see is under my grades. So if they click on that, then they will see uh, their grades. As an instructor, that role, you're not, you don't have any grades as a student, so you won't see anything there. So to get to the Grade Center, I'm going to go under Control Panel, and I'm going to choose Full Grade Center. There we go. And this is the Grade Center. Let me just check. Joy, are you with us? Oh, okay. Still working. Uh, okay, so I have these are my students: last name, first name, the last accessed, which is helpful, especially if you're teaching an online course. It tells you the last time the student went into that course. If you're teaching an online course, that can be important because you want to know if students have actually gotten into your course that first week of um, of your course. So when you're looking at your grade center, sometimes you'll see this blue indicator. 
and that means that students have started to do an assignment, but they haven't finished it yet. And this one, this assignment is actually a discussion board. So, and in it I have said that they have to post once to the discussion board, and then they have to reply to two of their peers. So these two students have posted at least once, but they haven't replied to two of their peers yet. So the blue indicator means that it's in progress. They're still working on it. So this particular assignment, the proposal assignment, is um, ask the students to submit a proposal for a research project. So this indicator, the yellow circle with the white exclamation mark in it, tells me that the student has submitted the assignment and it's ready to be graded. So to grade it, I click on the down arrow to the right, and I choose Attempt. And what I do, it takes us to what's called the inline grading feature. Now this is actually a third party program that Blackboard uses and it's called Crocodoc. Um, so if you ever see that, uh, it, you might see it in other programs as well. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but this is pretty small to see right now. So I want to make it bigger. This is the student's paper right here in the middle. So I'd like to be able to see that so I can read it and comment on it. And one way to do that is right over here on the side, there's four arrows going out. If I click on that, it makes it bigger. And if I click on this little right arrow, I'll click on that, and it makes it even bigger still. So it makes it a little bit easier for me to see. You can also use these magnify tools to make it bigger still. So one of your options that you can do with this is we can comment on what is on the paper. So click on the comment, and there's different types of comments that we have available. There's something called the point comment, so I just click on point, and now I click here, and it looks like if you've used the Microsoft Word review feature, this is what it looks like. So it has my name on it so that they know that I was the one that commented, because you can actually have students going back and forth with you if you decide to let them revise their work. You can put in comments, and then they can reply to your comments, and their name appears there. So I can write in my comments. There we go. I'm actually going to make this smaller because it's hard. So that is one type of comment. If you change your mind, you can delete that. And like I said, once a student is reading this, they'll be able to view the paper with your comments. They can reply to your comment. There's another type of comment called the area comment. And if I choose that, if I hold down and drag, I can draw a box around a section and say, whatever you would like. And then another type of comment is a text comment. And with that, I can, let me just get something smaller. Click and drag. There, smaller still. And then I can type in my comment. I'm trying to be positive on all my comments here. So those are the three types of comments. Now if you change your mind, you can delete the comments and then it asks, confirms you really want to delete that. The other type of markup that you can do to this is we can click on the draw feature. And if for any reason you can draw and you can pick different colors to draw with as well. Um, you can choose the highlighter so you can highlight certain parts of the text. And there's different um, colors of the highlighter. You can text, you can choose text, and with that you can actually type on the document. And then you can have strike out as well. So if I click and drag, I can strike out part of what they wrote. And then I can put a comment on there. There we go. So now I want to get all of this back again. I click the right arrow, there's my comments the left arrow again, I'm sorry, and now I can type in my grade here, so I'm going to give them a 90%. And I can type in additional feedback, 
uh, let's say you don't want to use any of these commenting features, you can just write general feedback. And I always suggest that you can use the spell checker, which is one thing about Blackboard is as you're typing, it doesn't check your spelling for you. So you can click on the spell checker and it tells you if there's been misspellings found or not. You could even attach a file if you wanted to. Um, if you had another piece of information that you needed to give to them, you can attach the file. And if you click on this A, it actually opens this feedback box up to something bigger that you can type in. It really does, but it's not doing it for me right now. <laughs> okay, well, for now, I, oh, the other thing I wanted to point out is that you can save a draft. So if you start giving feedback, but you don't want them to see it yet, you can just save it as a draft and go back to it later. So let me submit this. And so the grade has been submitted, and the student will see the grade. And when they go to look at it, they'll also see your comments there as well. Are there any questions about this? OK. All right. I'm going to go on then to the video feedback. So sometimes you might have um, a project where students aren't actually submitting a paper. So in this example, one of the projects was that the students had to design a website. So what you might like to do is to be able to provide feedback through video because you're not actually going to be marking up their website. So let's say this person right here, Dominic, submitted. So I'll click the down arrow. I'll choose the attempt. And then Dominic has provided us with his link to his website. So I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to open it up in a new window. There we go. So now what I want to do is I want to comment on this. So I click on that A, the large A, and this time, thankfully, the window did appear, as it should. And something that isn't intuitive at all is mashups. I'm going to click on mashups. And now on the Newark campus here at Rutgers, we're fortunate to have Kaltor available to us, which is a video storage and recording program that's integrated into Blackboard. So if I choose Kaltor Media, I've actually created some videos before, so th these are my pieces of media that I already have, and I've sent people video feedback. But what I want to do now is I'm going to go to Add Media on the side, and I'm going to record my screen. I have the option, if I wanted to, I could record from my webcam if you just wanted to talk to students to give them their feedback. Uh, but I'm going to walk through and talk about the website that the student did. So I'll click Record Your Screen. Um, I'll do this later. Java is always, it requires Java. And then it says, run the screen reader software. Yes, I'm going to run that. And then I clicked on the website the student had created. And this uh, broken line going around the edges, that's the frame for Kaltura, what it's going to record. So anything within this frame, it will record. I can make the frame bigger or smaller. And underneath the frame, you can see the control bar. And the red button is a, just trying to keep an eye on the time because it's 30 minutes here. Uh, the red button is the record button. So I'll click on record. And it gives me a countdown. And now anything that I say or anything that I do on the screen, Kaltor is actually recording. So I can say, oh, I love your website. and makes a lot of sense, and good job. Now, once I'm done, I click on Done. And if I want to try it out, it's created the little video for me. I'll click Play. It's my video that I have there. And so I'll give this a title. Let's say Dominic's 
feedback. And I will click Upload. So it created it, and now it's uploading it to my media through Kaltura. And choose Upload. Now when I go back to Blackboard, I go to Mashups again, Kaltura Media. Uh, and right now it's processing it. We're getting this converting message. And it might take a minute here. When it's done, we would choose select. But the longer the video is, the longer it takes for it to convert it. While we're waiting for this, does anybody have any questions? Uh, just so you know, if it would only appear, that video only appears to you, you see it, as well as uh, the student that you're linking it to. So none of your other students will be able to see it. And the student has to go through Blackboard to be able to access it. Otherwise, they won't be able to access the feedback. There we go. OK, so there's the feedback. I can click Submit. And then I can just say, watch the video and choose Submit. And then I'll give them a grade. This one's 80% and click Submit. And then when the student goes in, the student will be able to see their grade. And I'll show you that in one second. But So they have their grade, and, and the video is attached. Gina, you asked a question. Do you have to use assignments to use Grade Center? Um, I mean, you could put in manually. You could create your own column to put in there. So I could create um, create a column and just put in class participation or whatever. So it doesn't have to be an assignment through Blackboard. And I don't know, does that answer your question? OK, good. So I just want to take one minute uh, to log out as the instructor. And then I'm going to log in as a student to see what that looks like. One of our pretend students here. Hmm, I think it was this one. Yes, this is. We even give our pretend students names. So let's see, this is Dominic. And he goes into his course. And notice he doesn't see any of that grade part that we saw. He'll go to my grades. And this is the web design um, assignment that he has here. He sees his grade that he got an 80. I also just wanted to point out that new to Blackboard recently was the ability to put due dates in within Blackboard. And this is really helpful for students when you assign anything. If you can click yes to the due date and put the due date in there so that when students look at their grade book, they can see all of their grades, but they can also see what's coming up and the due dates for those. So I look at Dominic's website project. And there it is. And he can click here and watch the video and see my feed. So that's how he accesses the uh, video feedback. So it's not something you would want to do necessarily for every student, especially if you have an, a large class. But if you have things like a website or something else that you want to provide them. It's easier to provide them with more uh, feedback where you're more talking to them. Then this is something to consider. Does anybody have any questions? We have two minutes left. see one person typing in the chat box. So. Or you could grab the microphone if you'd like. How do you review assignments that have already graded? OK, good question. Let me just get back in real quick as the instructor.
you actually just go through the grade center again. All of a sudden, I don't see the. Oh, here we go. Too many courses. Grade center, full grade center. And then any of these, I can just click the down arrow and choose the attempt again. And I'm back into where my feedback was. So all of this that I did in the Crocodoc or any of the comments that I offered as well are there. How long do the grades stay on Blackboard? Um, they stay up there right now. Sorry, what are we supposed yes, to be Debbie, doing? Let's go ahead and jump in. Um, so our policy is that faculty have access basically for a year and a half. That's one full year plus the next major semester. In actual fact, so far, we have yet to delete a course. Going forward after this summer, though, we will start to enforce that policy. But we will always keep a copy and a backup up if you ever needed to go beyond that, especially for grade disputes, which seem to go on forever sometimes. Thanks, Joy. Anybody else? Oh, perfect timing. It's 3.30. So um, I'm here for, uh, I can stay on for longer if people have any more questions. Uh, I'd be happy to answer them or to show you something else if you would like. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us. And we'll be sending everybody a link to the recording of this webinar just in case. So thank you.